Hello, this is question two of the 2020 Ordinary Level Leaving Cert Maths exam. Paper one. And up the top right, you'll find a card that I'll bring to the playlist that plays all the solutions to the questions in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question. So you can try it in your own time before looking at my solution. This is a two part question, part A and B unrelated. Part A is this question here. It's just asking us to add or take away fractions and then to equate them. So there's something we don't know in here, x. There's only one thing we don't know, x, 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 and there's one equation, we can solve this. Now, you don't have to do this, but I like to get rid of these fractions first. Fractions make it very awkward, make it very messy. And to get rid of that, it's quite easy. We can just multiply everything by a number. Um, so, because we have an equals here means we can multiply everything on the right by, say, 2, multiply everything by the right on, by the, on the left by 2, that'll get rid of this 2. Now, we'll have to multiply everything on the right by 2, that's fine. We could then do the same with 3, that'd get rid of this 3, and we'd have to multiply everybody else by 3. And then 4, but you know, I can do it all in one go by doing 12. So I'm going to multiply 12 by 9x minus 6 over 2, equals, and I'm going to multiply the right-hand side by 12, let's see, and that's multiply everything on the right, everything on the left. Now, multiply works great with adding, because it just goes into both of them. So 12 can go into both of them there. So let's see what happens. The 2 disappears, and a 6 appears here. The 3 disappears, and a 4 appears out here. The 4 disappears, and a 3 appears out here. Now let's multiply what we have left there. 6 is still multiplying into this bracket. 6 9s, 54x, 6 times minus 6, uh, plus times a minus is a minus, 6 times 6 is 36, equals, let's see, 4 times 3x is 12x, 4 times minus 14 is minus 56, double check on a calculator, anything like that, um, plus 3, Multiplied by plus 9 is plus 27x. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, now let's we can get the like terms together first, if you would rather. Let's see, 4x minus 36. And on this side, there's two x terms. 12x plus 27x. Add them together, we get 39x minus 56. Oh, I'm missing an x somewhere. Here we go. Then I like to get all my x's on the left and all my numbers on the right. So let's do that. Let's do that in one go. 54x will take 39x from both sides. Or a lot of students think of it as moving it across. It's not perfect, that idea of moving it. But that's the way I, uh, I do it quickly as well. So it moves across. Plus comes into a minus. Uh, the minus 36 becomes plus 36. So minus uh, 56 never moved. This becomes plus 36. Right, what have we got here? This is 15x. If we take uh, 54, take away 39, it's 15x equals, and we have 20 over here, or I should say minus 20. So we just need x on its own. Let's do one last line here. The 15, let's divide both sides by 15. I'll do it here just to emphasize it. Divide both sides by 15. Or you can think of it as just a 50 and multiply turns into divide. So x is equal to minus 20 over 15. Or we can get a smaller fraction, 5 goes into both of these, minus 4 over 3. That is our final answer for part A. So on to part B, which I've put up here. Now what we have here is a simultaneous equation. It's not a basic simultaneous equation. Lots of students like them, they learn them and they get used to them. But no, this is one with an x squared involved. That means we can't do it the way students like to do it, where there's a number on top of a number. We multiply them, we add them, they disappear. We can't do that. There's another way to do simultaneous equations. It works for the simple ones, and it works for this one. It's the only way we can do it for this one, though. And that's by replacing one. Take the, a simple equation, whichever simpler. This one's obviously a lot simpler. And we rearrange it so it's x equals or y equals. That's what I want. I want x equals or I want y equals. In, in this case here, the first example, let's write it again. 3x minus y equals 4. You know, it's going to be easiest to get y in its own. 
let's 3x, uh, let's move the y over here and the 4 over here equals y. So we have y in its own. Y, let me rewrite that as well. Students much rather when I write it this direction. It's the same thing. Hopefully you can see that. Y equals y equals just reading left to right or right to left. Okay, so now that I've re changed the first equation to tell me this. Or oh, maybe I should go back a bit and say, there's two things we don't know here, x and y, and there's two equations. So, so that means I'm happy, I can solve this. Okay, so I've changed the first one to, to look a little different, y equals. And now I'm gonna use this information in the second one. So let me write the second equation again. I'll do it up here, because I'll need a bit of room. So the, the, here's the first equation and the second one. The second one, let me write it again. 4x squared minus 3x. Now I get to y. Instead of writing y, I can write something else equals 4. So instead of y, I can write whatever y is equal to, because they're the same thing. And it's, it's Think of it like a nickname. If uh, you have, uh, some people call you Paul, but then your nickname might be, I don't know, whatever your nickname is. It's the same thing. It doesn't make a difference whether you're called this or this. And so let's see, 3x minus 4. But now look what we have here. We have one equation with one thing we don't know. It might be a little complicated, but it's still one thing we don't know. Okay, let's start multiplying out the brackets here. We get 4x squared hasn't changed. Now minus 3x times 3x, we get minus. 3 times 3, we get a 9. And x times x, we get x squared. Now minus 3x times minus 4. Minus by minus, we get a plus. 3 times 4, we get a 12, and there's an x. And this is equal to 4. Let's clean this up a little bit. Like terms, we have x squared terms here. 4 minus 9, so it's minus 5 x squared plus 12x. And let's move this guy over to equals. Minus 4 equals 0. I did that because I like to have equals 0 when I have a quadratic, and that's what this is. So you need to notice that this was a quadratic. So you want to change it to look like this. Uh, I, I like to have plus numbers here. It's not too important. So let's multiply everybody by minus one. I'll change him to a plus, I'll change this one to a minus, and I'll change this one to a plus. And zero and minus zero are the same thing, zero. So let's go ahead and try and solve this. I hope it goes in as a fraction. If it doesn't, we can use the minus b formula, or we can use the minus b formula now, if you like. I know lots of students don't like using uh, fractions uh, or factoring, so use the minus b formula now, but I'll show you how to use it with fractions. Right, what two numbers can make 5x squared? And it, we want both of them to have an x. So x times 5, it's the only two numbers, at least, without getting into uh, fractions or anything like that, um, or rational numbers in this case. So 5x times x will multiply to make this. What multiplies to make 4? Well, we could have 4 and 1. We could have 2 and 2. We could have 1 and 4. So we have to think some of them through. So we want them to add to get 12. So I can see here, and it is a bit of an art form, I can see 2 and 2 will work. Because 5x times 2 is 10. And 2 times x is 2. So 10 plus 2 makes 12. So this should work. Although I need both of them to be a minus to make this one work. And that's good because minus 2 by minus 2 makes plus 4. That works. Minus b formula would have got to do something similar. So what does x equal? x must equal then... Actually, no, I'll do this a slower way. I'll say 5x minus 2 must equal 0. If two numbers multiply to get zero, one of them must be zero, or x minus two must equal zero. There are two options. Let's see, move the two over, and we get five, let, let me write here, five x equals two, that means x must equal two over five, dividing uh, both sides by five there. This one's a lot easier, x is equal plus two. Students get too used to just changing the sign. I see students write, x is plus 2, x is plus 2. No, it's not just the number that's here, it's not just a different sign of this number. Only when x is, there's a 1x here, does that work. Right, so there are two answers. Oh, I nearly did what students often do. They give me two answers and then stop. 
That's not what we wanted. We wanted to solve this simultaneous equation. That means I want to know what y is as well. I found what x is, I need to know what y is. Now we don't have to do a lot of work because y is right here. y is equal to 3 times x minus 4. But remember, we know what x is, but we have two answers for it. It's 2 over 5 is one of the answers. So what's that? That's 6 over 5 minus 4. A calculator will do this for us, or if you want to do it yourself, uh, minus 4 is the same as minus 20 over 5. Just make it look as much like this one as you can so they can interact. So minus 20 over 5. So let, what have we got? 6 minus 20 minus 14 over 5. That's one answer. The other answer would be here. Uh, y is equal to 3 times 2 minus 4. Again, I'm just using the y equals here. And this one is y is equal to 6 minus 4 y is equal to 2. There, there are four answers, if you will. x is equal to 2 over 5, y is equal to minus 14 over uh, 5, or x is equal to 2, and y is equal to 2. Th these two are joined together, and these two are joined together a little bit. That's important when we're going to do coordinate geometry, but not so important in this question. Right, I hope that answered all your questions for this, uh, this question in the paper. If you have any follow-ups, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching, have a great day.